as devotees do gather, let's just greet each other as we do with Vanchakal Patrubhya's child. And you know the rest. We are all together here regularly. Jai dear devotees, Pancha Kalpa Tarubhiya's cha, Kripa Sindhubhiya Eva cha, Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. Mm, uh, to Guru, sorry. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Anmilitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. To Goranga, Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratuje Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vas Adi Gauravati Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So welcome. All oh, dear devotees, Govinda, Govinda, welcome Jeevana David Asi. <laughs> well, sorry, you're just getting up. <laughs> Wrong time to welcome you, but welcome. And on Facebook, I do have Facebook open. If it is cooperating with us, yes, seems to be. And so to the devotees, well, quite a few devotees already with us too on Facebook, including Rupa Vilas Prabhu. Good to see you again and again. Happy to see you there. And Seva Rupa Devirasi in Mexico, to yourself and to the family, of course, to my obeisances and all continuous good thoughts. And Michael Madhava Prabhu, Jagamohini Devirasi, to each of you. And to Matura Basini Devirasi. Maladhari Devirasi. Wonderful to all of you, all respectful, respectable Vaishnavas and worshipful Vaishnavas who are with us today. My obeisances to one and all. And Bhagavan Prabhu joined us also just now, Gangalila Devirasi. So today, today, here on this side of the world, it is the Gundicha Marjanam and a day for cleaning the heart. Every day is a day for cleaning the heart. All right, not just once a year. Adana Jai Prabhu, Dandavat, you're doing okay? Kemona Chain, Kagdila, Horosho? Horosho, okay, very good. So, Adana Jai Prabhu in Russia, our Russian representation today. So, Jai. So today, the, the Gundi Chamajanam, day for cleaning the house, and a day that we can remember definitely uh, for many cleaning of the temples, how much we cleaned our heart, must be so. In Nabadeep and in Dum Dum Park and in Jagannath Puri. But I have to say, in Jagannath Puri, I don't remember as being so active in the temple. I'm trying to think of specific memory from there. I've got specific memories from, from Dum Dum Park and from Nabadi for sure. And I think the Rasayatra, I mean, the Gundicha Marjanam, I remember in Calcutta, uh, sorry, in Puri, Jagannath Puri, I have memories, but not so much of our cleaning the temple, but I remember going with the devotees. We went, as we do, on the on Sankirtan, when we went all the way from our temple in uh, Gor Batsai, which is near the sea, and then we went on Sankirtan place by place, but we visited various uh, places along the way. Uh, ending up, almost, not quite ending up, we still had another two stops afterwards, but going to the Gundicha temple. And at the Gundicha temple, uh, the, there were many people, it, the Indian body devotees can go in as unfortunate. In fact, not all Indian body devotees can go in. The Hindu section can go in uh, to the Gundicha temple, but we cannot go into the Gundicha temple. And we should not try to go in. Some devotees always want to 
try to bend the rules and see how far they can get in through the gates before they get kicked out. But we are there, as Gurudev said, we will respect the rules and custom of the, of the city, of the town, of the poor, Jagannath Puri. So Jagannath Puri, the town of Lord Jagannath, we respect their customs. And, but I remember that many uh, Hindus are going in and on the street <laughs> outside and around the entrance, there are capitalists, okay, they may not be huge capitalists, but there are capitalists, there are businessmen, the, the Vaishya department of the society, selling brooms. But how symbolic can it become? You know, an Indian broom is made up of, okay, different kinds of brooms, but the standard broom where you bend down and you sweep the ground like this, that standard broom is made up of many, many uh, reeds or grass stems. It's not actually straw, it's not rice straw, but it is something stronger. Maybe somebody knows what, what the plant is. Anyway, many, many like thin sticks joined a wrapped up bound with with the rope and then the uh then it works as a broom but the the capitalist as it were the businessman outside they're selling like two or three pieces like two little sticks and so you see everybody going in with these like three little sticks and you think well how symbolic is it you know, cleaning the temple? Surely it's not so symbolic that you're going to go in and your cleaning item is going to be three little pieces of what would be a broom, which is probably made up of, I don't know, 50, 60 of those things. So anyway, this is a, a memory I'm coming up with from, from being in Puri on this Jagannath uh, Rathyatra, well, Jagannath Rathyatra time with this Gundicha Marjanam there. But by the way, at the gate, looking in, then we are trying to look with the eye of what really is within the wall. There's a large wall around the Gundicha compound, the Gundicha temple compound. And we do see inside there trees and green and like this. And this inside there, this is Brindavan. This is Brindavan in Puri Leela. And Everywhere is in each dharm we know. And so in Puri, that's Vrindavan. So what we can see, because we can see inside the gate, you can look, look inside, it's a big, big archway, uh, which has big wooden doors, which, which, uh, which close and open. But uh, inside there, we can see inside. And so with, as we can in separation, then we do go inside and try to, I mean, with our mind, and we try to think, oh, what does Jagannath see there? What is here in the Holy Dharm? And the Gundicha Marjanam, all of us, everybody here knows, yes, everybody here knows. It is the cleaning of the Gundicha temple, whereas the altar is there in Vrindavan, which is uh, the, the Leela, the the Leela of uh, Mahaprabhu to come from Dwarka, to come from Kurukshetra, to come from the kind of grand, grandly atmosphere, the grand atmosphere, and to come to the simple atmosphere of Vrindavan. But in order for him to come, to invite him there nicely, then the devotees, they prepare the area, they prepare the altar, they prepare the sitting place where Jagannath will sit, the temple where he'll be, the grounds surrounding the temple, and even the roads that surround the grounds that surround the temple, the roads as we were standing on, as we, we are so standing on outside the compound, and they would wash the, the roads, clean the roads, everything, so that Jagannath will be able to come um, to, a, to a clean place. So this is part of the build-up and the preparation for the Rathyatra, which takes place tomorrow for many of us. 
and the day after tomorrow. For those of you who it's evening time for now, means on Friday, the 1st of July. So Friday, the 1st of July, and this will be the 80th anniversary of Gurumar establishing, officially opening, declaring Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mat as Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mat. So again, a special day for us. So Jagannath Rathyatra coming tomorrow and today Gundicha Marjana. Two chats, oh, two chats in the chat box, long chat. From Praneshwari. From Affectionate Guidance, the voice of Sri Chaitanya Day. And so this is about Gundicha Marjana. Okay, thank you very much. So, Praneshri Devi, please read for us. Let us hear you. Please, please, you read it. Didi, we like to hear from you. You, you know, Vrindavan Chandra in Ukraine, he speaks very good English, but he, he gives a certificate to Madhurananda Prabhu here. He says he speaks the best English. And why? Because he's got some added accent, and his added accent is the Italian, like li lively Italian sing sing song intonation while he while he speaks English or reads English, and he loves his English. And so you also have the, the Latin sing sing song life in your reading. Please read. And who is speaking? Srila Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj. So yes. 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 I, I'm predicting the future, the very near future, that now Praneshri David Asi will speak Srila Gurudev's words. Hare Krishna. This is in Affectionate Guidance, the chapter, The Voice of Sri Chaitanya Dev. There is a verse, and I need your help there. Can you please read the verse? Well, all of us are, we all need help with the, with the Sanskrit. And I know this from, from being with, with devotees who have actually studied Sanskrit in the university and at college, not just you know, at home, they pick up a book and try to learn it. And I've heard, really I've heard, and quite recently too, uh, how one is saying one thing and another is saying another thing. And then I'm thinking, okay, so... And they both say, no, this is from the Sanskrit teacher, best Sanskrit teacher. So then Sanskrit, we understand, is not so straightforward. So we'll all do our, our best. Anera hridaya mana mora mana brindavana mane bane eka kori jani taha tomara pada dvaya karaha jadi udaya tabe tomara purna kripa mane but actually, this is Bengali. <laughs> so, <laughs> but a little, okay, that was Bengali. And now for the English. The illusory environment is always attacking and disturbing the Jiva souls in so many ways. But Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati started the cleansing process like Gundicha Marjan, the cleansing of the Lord's temple. This was his first work in this world. The heart must be made like Vrindavan. It won't do to keep a jungle in the heart. Many disturbing elements are a jungle, but there is nothing like that in Vrindavan. Everything in Vrindavan is perfectly pure. So we must worship the Supreme Lord purely. To mix with Maya for our sense pleasure and invite God into our heart is gross hypocrisy. With great force, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur did everything in their power to smash such hypocrisy. Jai. Strong, clear, and affectionately presented to us by Gurudev. Very strong, you see, very strong. Gross hypocrisy to mix with Maya for our sense pleasure and invite God into our heart is gross hypocrisy. 
with great force, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, did everything in their power to smash such hypocrisy. Hare Krishna. So let us not be hypocritical. Let us not be hypocritical. Hare Krishna. And around the world today, devotees will be cleaning temples. Oh, so my memories in Dum Dum Park and in Navadipa are of extensive cleaning of the temples, the kitchens, the uh, Prashadam Hall, or Dum Dum Park Prashadam Hall. We remember, we remember that cleaning process too. My goodness. The life that lives hiddenly, <laughs> taking the opportunity to steal some prasadam from the Vaishnavas. There is life that hides hidden, that lives hiddenly in that search. Hare Krishna. Yes, who would like to say something? Who would like to say something on this subject of Kundicha Marjanam? Some experience from others. Jiva Goswami, uh, Jiva Goswami, Jiva Nadiri, it's early in the morning, please help me, <laughs> Jiva Nadiri, <David> <laughs> I'm sure you are Goswami too, you are a very sober lady, sober means very, hey, sober lady, why not, Jiva Nadiri, Asi, please, something, what experience have you got from, from this Gundicha Marjanam day? Hmm. Well, it is a, certainly a lovely day because even from the very beginning, we were always told that when you clean the Lord's temple or wash his pots or do any of that kind of seva, it's cleaning your heart. So we've heard that for many, many years. Um, unfortunately, I have this gross hypocrisy thing going on. So uh. um, not sure how much I remember of doing that. But um, we would try to do that on many occasions. I missed, I missed some years, but some years I was able to catch it. I know we're doing it in SoCal tomorrow because we're you know, in the different time zone. So we'll have some plans to do that for tomorrow. Um, so, but I was thinking if it's okay, it's not quite about um, Gunjana Marjana, but it is something that Gurudev said about how he sees Lord Jagannath. It's a, um, you can see, but I cannot piece that, uh, read it quite frequently because it's very, it's very appropriate and it's really helpful for when you're seeing the deities or trying to be seen by the deities. So I was thinking of reading that, if that's okay. Definitely okay. Please do so. Okay. So this, this comes again from the uh, Gaudiya Darshan part of the, of the main mat. You uh, website. So the student is asking Srila Gurudev, what is the real vision of the deity? How should we see the deity? And Srila Govinda Maharaj is saying that at present, through our mundane eyes, we cannot see the real deity. But I can say what I do when I go to the temple of Lord Jagannath. In front of Jagannath, I pray, oh my Lord, I cannot see your divine form. But you please see me and bestow your mercy upon me. Through that, I will be able to see you. And this way, I negotiate with Lord Jagannath. You can see me present in front of you. Please do the needful. And then he quotes one of the verses from the Prapanaji Venamrita, the Parama Karuniko Nabavat Para, Parama Sochatamo Nachamat Para, Iti Vicentya Hare Mai Pamare. Yaruchitam Yadurnata Tarachara. It's in the eighth, eighth chapter, fourth verse. And it means there was no one as merciful as you and no one as pitiable as me. So, O oh Lord, considering this fallen soul, please do what ought to be. And um, there's, there's more too, but it's a um, really, really uh, powerful and beautiful way when you're in front of the deities, how to think, or even when chanting the holy name, how to think that, you know, please, please see me, please see my, 
my, my sad, pitiable condition and please do what needs to be done. Please do the needful. So I was going to, should I read just a little bit more? Yes, please this do so. Thing. Actually, you've got us hungry to hear more. Oh, yeah. So, so Gurudev says, this is my prayer to Lord Jagannath. I am fallen. I have no vision of you. I have nothing, no property, no divine service. But you are so merciful to conditioned souls like me. Everyone says you are Patit Pavan, the savior of the fallen, and I am Patit, fallen. Then please do the needful. Please do what is necessary. I also pray in this way when worshiping the deity. You are not a doll. You are a real divine form of Krishna. He is present before me, having taken on this deity form. So I know your form can do anything, your form can show anything, and your form can bestow mercy upon all the conditioned souls. I have received this consciousness from my guru and the sadhus. So I am presenting a small offering for your satisfaction. Please take it. Please be satisfied with this offering. I have no qualities or qualifications, but you have all qualities and qualifications. And then Gurudev says, someone who is engaged in worshiping the deity will follow this process. Wonderful. <clears throat> and that rem reminds me from Jagannath Rathyatra time, actually when Jagannath is on the cart and uh, not yet entered into the Gundicha temple. Uh, well, being with Gurudev, driving Gurudev, and then being with Gurudev in front of Jagannath, in front of Baladev, in front of Subhadra. And you know how we are always trying to see through the eyes of the, of the pure devotees. And I'm standing, literally, I'm standing beside Gurudev, wondering what Gurudev really is seeing, because he's standing in front of Jagannath, and he's in his like, medit quiet meditative pose and, and he's in front of Jagannath. We're on the ground, not on the cart. We're on the ground and Gurudev standing there. And really one of, the, of those, like many I suppose, but one of these very special moments in our life when we're standing with Gurudev, just side by side. And I'm really trying to think, uh, what does Gurudev see in Jagannath? He's looking at us, and, you know putting up a little hand saying i'm here also and this is in the in the evening maybe 8 p.m or 9 p.m with the crowds have gone and guru is saying now let us go to jagannath and then we drive there and that time i do not know if it is possible now we can drive actually quite close to where is jagannath and maybe guru dave's cloth and stature allowed the police to let us through to drive up to close to Jagannath so Gurudev didn't have to walk very far near the Gundicha temple and it was peaceful and the evening in Puri after the hot day the evening generally is like so sweet so sweet because the sea, sea breeze from the sea beach and of course it's the sun which is the quite intense part of the heat of the day, the sun being nighttime has gone down. So wonderful memories there for me of that time standing in front of the Lord. And I have to say that I've also driven Gurudev, especially when we arrive in Puri and then driven Gurudev to the front of the Jagannath temple. And so then he comes down and go with Gurudev to the entrance, and I have to say that I sort of walk into the Jagannath temple with Gurudev. Of course, it's all imagination, but I, I walk in with my mind with Gurudev and think, oh, where's Gurudev going? And now it must be somewhere near the Guru Dastamba and now coming in front of the, the deity. And we are really, we are allowed out. We are only allowed outside, outside the, the, the wall. And so there we are, we are kind of in separation when Gurudev goes to have darshan. And Gurudev, many times saying about, oh, I'm going to Jagannath, 
I'm his, I'm his servitor and I'm coming to serve the Lord. I'm signing in. I'm coming to see Jagannath. By his mercy, we are here. And before going to Puri, Gurudev always saying, actually, we cannot go to Puri despite all arrangement unless Jagannath gives us permission. So again, what he sees and what we see, that is very different. And as we always hear what Mahaprabhu sees, as Guru Mahar is saying, Mahaprabhu standing in front of Jagannath flowing torrents of tears coming from his eyes. What does he see? And then Guru Maharaj very clearly saying, we see an awkward figure. <laughs> and what does Mahaprabhu see? He sees Krishna with the fruit, so many things. Hare Krishna. Chinmoy Dei Prabhu. Have you got some treasures up your sleeve from your weeks transcribing, watching, hearing, absorbing, remembering? You've been doing your Shravanam and your Smaranam. Now we invite you for some Kirtanam to tell us something that you heard, seen, if or if not heard and seen this week, something from your treasure, treasure house. Well, just what, because you, as you're talking about vision, there is this one just reminds me of Gurudev was talking about one time when some associate of Srila or uh, Saraswati Thakur, uh, he was saying that he had seen Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you know, in person, or whatever. And Srila Saraswati Thakur told this man, no, you have not seen Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And this man was like, yes, yes, I've, I've seen Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Saraswati Thakur was like, no, you have not seen Bhaktivinoda Thakur. <laughs> he could not understand the actual vision. So something to think about. The, the true vision. The vision of the Vaishnavas. And Srila Sarasati Thakur also, and in his later days, then he told, he said directly to one of his uh, leading or prominent sannyasis, he said, you could not see me. You could not see me. You uh, did your your uh, your canvassing your collection you were giving me some money as out of duty you're giving me some money out of duty but you could you know from the collection etc um, but you were establishing yourself establishing and you could not see me you did not see me he said that about one of his own prominent sannyasis so we also pray that we can see Guru, Guru Dev, Guru Maharaj, that we can see our Gurus and Krishna, of course, that one day they may let us see them properly. And this is what is darshan, by the way, when they can, when they show themselves to us. Like a lot of words, we tend to use some of these words very easily. very kind of, oh, I'm going to have darshan off. Okay. We pray we may have darshan off. Yes, Prabhu, something more? Chinmoy Dei Prabhu? I think there's something more because you're highlighted. <laughs> well, another thing I, I guess I can mention too, because it stuck in my mind, uh, because we want to have this vision and this uh, recent video that we showed uh, Gurudev, one, one quote that stuck in my mind is that uh, uh, he was saying, uh, I do not know where Krishna is. I do not know what Krishna is eating, but I know the mood to satisfy Krishna. And this is the teachings of Guru Maharaj. So to have that proper vision, we need the proper teaching. We need the proper mood. And, you know, affectionately, Gurudev is giving that to us. That's what he wants to share. Is that type of mood, that type of vision, which is the teachings of Guru Maharaj. It's, it's actually a very beautiful video. Uh, Guru Dev is very affectionate, sweet, and he's opening his heart and expressing that what he wants to do, he wants to share what he has with his friends and family. Is this on the YouTube channel recently posted, is it? Not yet. It's still, I showed the first part last week on Facebook. The second part is 
this Saturday. Okay. After you do post it, seeing as you've all given us an appetizer, <laughs> please in the next or whichever back to back to basics after you post it, please just make a little note and let us know. This particular video is the video that I was referring to because really when something strikes us, it we're very happy to share it and we just, oh, yeah. and many things strike us and they kind of pass by in the river of amazing things and mm -hmm. every talk is the best, every book is the best, every <laughs> I mean, every chapter is the best and really it is very much like that. Chamatkara, because it's, everything is living, but so many things. It's like Gurudev says this on this, or something on a particular occasion, it just it hits home somehow. And you see, you see, you are saying, Gurudev, with affection, he's giving us guidance, and really it is so. And but here, it's not that just with, oh, you do, you do anything and everything, and you know. Krishna's all good, nothing for you to do. Uh, you just be, you know, something like a good boy. But here you see this expression that was given in affectionate guidance a little earlier. To mix with Maya for our sense pleasure. Okay, to mix with Maya for our sense pleasure and invite God into our heart is gross hypocrisy. I mean, Gurudev also very strong, but he says these strong things in, a, in an affectionate way. And he said many strong things. And sometimes his voice, you know, he can, his voice can be also, yes, with affection, but with gravity. Gurudev is very deep, very serious, very grave also. And then with great force, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who we're remembering so much now as well, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur did everything in their power to smash such hypocrisy. Hare Krishna. And don't forget how degraded everything was when Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur appeared in the world so quickly. And we must be very careful that we don't mistake the affection and approachability, etc., of Srila Gurudev, especially of Srila Gurudev, we don't mistake that for being an allowance to do anything and everything and take devotional service lightly. Hare Krishna. Otherwise, we can easily go a long way off course very quickly. Hare Krishna. And today Paramananda Prabhu is driving. You are driving, right? Or are you passengering? No, you're driving. Raj, in five minutes, I will not be driving. Okay. So don't Rush, don't speed, don't break the speed limit. <laughs> it's okay, you can break the speed limits because but one day I'm in the car with Paramananda who is driving us, and we're going quite fast through a through a certain area. And I said, there's no sp speed limits <laughs> in this area. He said, Oh yes, but in the middle of the day, it's too hot for the police to do anything. So they're <laughs> taking refreshment somewhere. <laughs> so maybe it's a hot day. Oh, also in Thailand, we know they're doing, doing the Gundicha Marjanam. And of course, Tami Marj explained to me a couple of days ago that how busy everyone's going to be. Because he said they take every single thing out from the kitchen. And anybody who has been serving in the kitchen knows that throughout the year, lots of things accumulate. Maybe it's clean, but everything comes out. So it's just the bare shells, the bare this, the bare that, and then they wash it all down. So that's only part of the temple, of course. But this Gosai <laughs> described about Chiang Mai is a big cleansing today. And by the way, in Nabadeep, I can tell you some 
some story too about the cleansing of the temples in Navadip and the guest houses and like everywhere being cleansed and devotees doing this. And then one year, you know, the devotee is very infused because we've been reading Chaitanya Charitamrita about how the devotees, they would throw water on the walls and the ceilings and this, that and the other, you know, after getting out the large uh, dirt and then the smaller dirt and then they're washing the walls and the ceilings, this, that and the other. And then our devotees doing like this with great enthusiasm in the guest house, the Westerners guest house. But what happened after that was the ceiling fan, each of the rooms has a ceiling fan. And the ceiling fan, it works by electricity. I mean, devotees should notice this. And <laughs> then the, at the bottom, the, the fan goes around and the middle part is like a, a part which holds the motor, which just makes it look pretty. So you don't see the, like the ugly electric motor. So there's that covering underneath. And room after room, then the electricity stopped, the fans, nothing worked. And then what happened was that the motor was being was literally just sitting in water. And so room by room, I was feeling Madhavananda Prabhu, I remember. <laughs> he helped very patiently. We we shut off the from the mains electricity where all three phases are cut, cut off, so there's no danger of electric shock. But then shut off that. And we have to be practical, dear devotees. Yes, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, throwing water over the walls and ceiling, but the indoor switches and the indoor fans, etc., they're not designed to uh, withstand water. So, oh, then after that, on oh, Dum Dum Park, we will get an electric shock from the switch to turn on the light because of the water the similar thing, throwing water everywhere. And I remember getting good electric shock of the light switch in the, in the temple room, in the Nat Mandir, after, after the cleansing of the Gundicha temple ceremony in the modern age. So with electricity, we have to be careful. Hare Krishna. Ratnakara Prabhu's iPhone is with us. Does that mean Amiya Sindhu Prabhu is nearby? Where are you, Ratnakara Prabhu? Anybody home? No, my Mayapur. You're in Mayapur. Yes. And Papa Kal Kalkata go. Acha. And what what are you doing today? Have you done any cleansing of the temple? I just be in temple, but there no wash. No wash. It's still early. See. It's it's eight o'clock in the morning. Ten past eight. eight. In the okay. After breakfast. I after breakfast, you volunteer. You go and say, please use me. I want to help clean. Yeah. This is my suggestion. It's not an instruction. Of course. My suggestion. And by the way, another thing which motivates devotees in Nabadik, there is a quote about how what you, whatever service you do in the Holy Dharma, whatever service you do in Nabadik is multiplied. I think it was by 1,000, I mean, like quite a lot. So it is very good inspiration that, you know, what we do in the Dharm, we really must try to understand that everything we do in the Dharm is multiplying. We're in the, we're in the Dharm of, of Mahaprabhu. We all may dream about being there, but when we are there, we must try to utilize our time nicely too. And so the scripture does give us some encouragement for doing seva. And why will we not do seva? I mean, we're not selfish in that sense, but when this emphasis is given, then we understand it's so important. Seva, seva, seva. Yes, Paramananda Prabhu. 
he already changed places. Yes, changed places mystically. Either he flipped the video and so now he's not driving or he got out and moved over to the other to the passenger seat <laughs> i don't think we can yet mystically change seats digitally and in fact but anyhow no steering wheel and there we there we are permanent please a few words Maharaj krishna priya can be very possessive over driving she says she's feeling dizzy if she's not driving, so she's taking over. Okay, and Krishna Priti, Dandavat, and I don't know who else it may be in the oh, car. She, not yet oh. here, but here's Pavan Krishna behind. Jai Pavan Krishna with Dandavat. Are you, are, you, are you on your way to the temple? How much? We've been, we just. Uh, being to the temple. No, just give me a second. Maybe like a more fan Just been to the temple. So Maharaj is in good spirits and they are preparing for the big marginal, as usually. So they're just finishing their breakfast. I'm, I'm pretty sure they already finished the breakfast and it's going to be a major cleaning over there. And Lalita, Bhakti Lalita Didi, give a nice class. Uh, gent gently saying it's the ladies' day today. Sandeep Krishna was uh, giving a choice to stay or not to stay, but kind of asked to, you know, leave so some space for the ladies. <laughs> he complained a little bit. <laughs> Anyhow. Maharaj, it's wonderful, wonderful few days of Parikrama, no doubt, and very Puri conscious, and really, it was our our uh, our destination, the final destination, when we were touring last time, uh, holy places in India, when this whole thing happened, and I'm still feeling that we're still in Puri, and somebody showed that photograph of our, uh, our temple there, and then I saw that room, the Gurudev's room, and then uh, I just... I uh, heard Gurudev explaining why didn't he stay there for a long time because he stayed there for some time and then he was back to the uh, Sevak Bhavan. Yes. Saying that it's just more convenient to meet people, to make them comfortable. Some elderly people wouldn't uh, have, will have some difficulties coming up and he wouldn't see people entering, who is entering. So Gurudev style, he wants to see and he wants to know everything that is happening. So he moved out later, but I remember that day, and Madhusu Maharaj can conform, were kind of near Ashraya, no shelter in Puri, and literally considering sleeping on the sands on the beach. Really, it was out, out I'm like, we we're, were talking about that, but then in the morning, me and Madhusu Maharaj, we went and we asked around different places, uh, different mats, Dharma shows, hotels, all full. I don't know why it was so full, but some kind of a event was, oh, Diwali, that one. So that, that one happened. And then uh, Maharaj is saying, there must be a place for us in our own temple. There must be a place. And I said, Maharaj, already we call Keshtu, and he's saying there is no place, everything is booked. And then we go there. And really, we can see that he got some inspiration from Govinda Maharaj. She was not himself. And I'm just, I noticed it since the very beginning when we enter and he's seeing Madhusudan Maharaj. And it's him who is asking for shelter in Gurudev Sevak Bhavan, or our temple, our guest house. Immediately he said, oh, yes, yes, there's a room. It was very unexpected. So we got that room and then later we're cleaning the room and I'm scrapping some old paint from the front door and there's a little uh, bronze or a, uh, brass plate saying, so Gurudev have given his own room for the devotees. And again, I don't think we would have gotten it if Mother Sudha Maharaj wasn't there. But it happened. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> and uh, another thing is that uh, we, we hear how Puri is already perfect. It's, it's a holy dam. It's absolutely, fully spiritual, fully divine abode. Even though we say that go lock and go cold, there are some differences. But in the scriptures, it is stated that Puri in the spiritual world, which is actually located not so far from Mathura, not so far from Varaka, a 
according to Sanat in this one is behind the Gavatamrit in description. But he is also stating that Puri on this plane is that very same Puri Dham with no difference whatsoever. And uh, Jagannath Dev is very particular about how things are happening there. And he is very protective of his servitors. And the other day we were remembering the pastimes of the Rama, uh, Ramanuja Acharya. When Ramanuja Acharya touring the India, he was a great Acharya at that time. He's Acharya Abhiman. He's establishing different centers. Also, he was re-establishing worship in many ancient temples according to a proper way of, according to his vision, we can say, proper Vedic way. So he came to Puri and then he observed something that didn't really uh, sit well with him. So he challenged the pandas and he called them for a discussion. He wanted to prove that he is right and certain things have to change. They have to uh, adopt a new way of worship, Jagannath. So what happened? He goes to sleep. And then he wakes up a hundred miles away. He's in Kurmakshetra. But Jagannath is very considerate. So he also, he also moved the bed, not just Ramanuja's body. But the bed was also there, so there was a minimum disturbance for Ramanuja Acharya. He didn't even walk up unless he, <laughs> until he was already in Kurvakshetra. And then Lord Jagannath appeared in his dream and said, Yes, you wanted to do some changes, you wanted to do some seva. Not in my dumb. Here I am the absolute authority. I am saying what needs to be done. All my servitors are doing what I am happy about, they're doing my bidding following my desires, no need any change here, but I do appreciate your uh, concerns. Here is the temple that is half abandoned. Can you do something about it? And that temple was Kurvakshetra and the Kurma Dev self manifested being there. And we were, we were there before Puri and we could see that it was very traditionally made. And uh, we can see the Ramanuja Acharya line signs everywhere there's a beautiful stamba a temples little temples in the corner the temple of ramatuja acharya the temple of the 12 alwars the great saints of south india nicely arranged so that is that according to ramatuja acharya style lakshmi sampradaya style and then another beautiful story which is even more close to us more close to us is how chaitanya bhagavata finishes with Pundarik Vidiniti trying to change something, chastising Jagannath servitors about offering starched cloth, which is a no no thing to do according to the Vedic injunctions. It's considered to be impure if starch is still on the cloth and you're offering to the deity, you have to wash it before, and then you offer it to the deity. So Pundarik Vidiniti, Rishabhan Raja, he's observing that and chastising rather heavily. And he's in the company of Swarup Damodar, who is his dear friend. So when he goes to sleep, everyone heard what happened. Affectionately, Baladev and Jagannath are coming and slapping his cheeks and chastising him for interfering and criticizing their servitors. So they're saying, no, bad idea. They're doing what they're doing, what is what is what are my orders? This is what I like. I like starch claws, so please be at peace. There is no offense from their side and do not criticize my servitors. What they do is for my satisfaction. So he, Jagannath is very protective to the Dhamma and so many wonderful pastimes in there. And we didn't mention quite a few places. I think we stopped in uh, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house, Bhaktivinoda Bari, and then Saraswati Thakur's appearance place, and then in Madhusudan Maharaj. And Madhusudan Maharaj can walk. Trust me, 24, 25 hours a day and eight, we, uh, eight days a week. When we came to Puri, I said, Maharaj, when we wake up in the morning, we go together, we refresh the places in our memory. I woke up at 5.30 and he is there. I said, okay, Maharaj, you're ready to go. He said, I already went. I said, what do you mean I already went? He already went and did the whole parikrama. But I just woke up in the morning, just getting ready. Anyhow, so the next stop uh, will be what? Jagannath Balab Gardens. 
Just uh, yes. just before the rehearsal are over. And so many pastimes over there. Mahaprabhu is hearing the Devadasis rehearsing Gita Govinda for the pleasure of Jagannath, and that happens in those gardens. Mahaprabhu met me running and Govinda practically drawing his body in front of Mahaprabhu, stopping him because Mahaprabhu is not thinking, a woman singing, a man singing. His, his heart is going to Vrindavan. He is irresistibly drawn. But then Govinda is stopping him and he said, Oh, you just saved my life. What if I would have, in my uncontrolled, ecstatic state, embraced that woman or came near to that woman? What would the public say about it? Really? He's, even though he's fully absorbed in uh, feeling the sentiments, uh, uh, diving deep in the sentiments of Shivata Rattarani, still he's concerned about giving us the lesson how one should behave himself on this plane. So it really, it is amazing how he can do that. So that happened. Also, we hear that uh, Ramananda Rai trained the Devadasis again in those gardens for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. The flowers, the, the leaves, uh, maybe later in the past, some fruits would be coming from that garden. Then Maharaj will take us to Narendra Sarovar. And that's another beautiful place of the pastimes of Lord Jagannath. The, the water pastimes happen there. Govinda, Vigraha, the Vijaya Vigraha of Jagannath. And Mahaprabhu observing that. Then Gundicha Mandir today. Then Maharaj will take us to the Simhadev temple just behind Gundisha Mandir. And then later on to Indrajumna Sarovar for beautiful pastimes, right? Today it will happen actually. Now they're washing Gundisha Mandir. And the whole area is revibrating with the holy names of the Lord. Because how are they asking? For something, and for something means the water pots and brooms, whatever is necessary for cleaning. They're saying, Krishna, Krishna. And those who are being asked, they're answering, Krishna, Krishna. And uh, Krishna, 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 Krishna. There's no other words. There's only Krishna name over there. And they're understanding each other perfectly. Okay, you want, okay, Krishna, Krishna, you want a water pot. Krishna, Krishna, I'm getting it to you. Meaning, meaning that. And after that, beautiful pastimes happen there. And then later on, Everybody goes and absolutely mind-blowing, stunning, uh, heart-melting pastimes in the waters of Indra Sarovar. When personalities like Swarup Damodar, uh, Gopinath Acharya, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Advaita Acharya, Nityananda, behaving like kids, imitating the sound of frogs, playing, splashing water, trying to drown each other and playfully, not like But anyhow, somebody gets on the shoulder of someone else and then they're having a water fight. Really beautiful pastimes. Anyhow, Maharaj, I'm signing off. Wonderful. And there are so, actually so many places in Puri and before the Parikramas and Goswami Maharaj, he asked me, well, please you know, make a list of you know, some way that we can go on Parikrama. And uh, there are lots of, because Puri is full of lots of places, lots of places of pastimes you can understand that the devotees are coming there every year. And so not only the Jagannath, directly Jagannath related pastimes, but the pastimes related to um, also Raghunath Das Goswami and the, um, so many you know, of the uh, Vaishnavas who are with him. But yes, today in particular, I'm pleased you mentioned about Indra Jumna Sarova. This is the uh, lake which is just past the Gundicha temple and past the Nushinga temple. And all the, that uh, Nushinga temple is directly mentioned there in Chaitanya Charitamrita also. And those roads, that whole area. So as we were perhaps reflecting and now last back to basics, back to back to basics, how the very places where the Lord was, they are there. I mean, the same rocks, stones, walls, you can, you can kind of, we have to imagine, I suppose, but really we can get some inspiration from all of this and how much they not symbolically cleanse the temple, but really cleanse the temple, the gardens and the 
area around there. And by the way, throughout the year, then that area in front of the Gundicha temple, it's a mass of stalls and you know, auto rickshaws park because they're taking pilgrims up and down the Gundicha, the um, Grand Road, the, that main road that comes from the Jagannath temple to there, which is a grand road. I mean, it's very, very, very wide. But all that is um, removed at this time. And so all those like small businesses and this, that, and the other, and the rickshaw stand, all these things, it's all gone. And today they hose it down literally with the fire engines. They use the fire engines to, with the powerful hose and they hose the whole area. And, and those days, as we heard, actually the water for cleansing the Gundicha temple and for around and about came from the Indragumna Sarova, which is nearby. And they would bring in you know, those clay pots and those clay pots would smash was when they accidentally bumped into each other, turned around and, oh, there's somebody else coming the other way, not a one-way street. Hey, he didn't horn, <laughs> he didn't blow. Blow horn, please, <laughs> as it says on the back of all the trucks. Didn't make a sound as he suddenly turned. Anyway, all this is taking place there and that pastime also, it is eternal so. Again, we are always trying to not imagine, but to remember that these, these, these things are taking place. And just as nowadays we can have Rathyatra all over the world, nowadays we can participate in Rathyatra by seeing live the events that are taking place there. But also all over the world, we can do the practical things of Gundicha Marjanam by cleansing all the temples of the Lord and cleansing the temple. We heard in our first moments joining the temple way back when, cleansing the temple is cleansing the heart. That motivating us to uh, cleanse our heart because I think most of us when we join the temple realize our hearts are pretty dirty when we read in comparison and still pretty dirty when we read in comparison to the hearts of the pure Vaishnavas. So, Cleansing the temple is for us all. So let us all try to volunteer wherever we are to do something extra today. I also will volunteer and, and will do something extra today. Even if they say, no, it's not for you. It's for us all. Happily, we'll do something extra today. Hare Krishna. And I'm in Gurudev's room here and I have to say, that the devotees, I went to Rome for, for a week or 10 days, doing many programs, many activities there. And when I came back and I walked into, I came here into Gurudev's room and really I'm reminded it is Gurudev's room and I'm being allowed to use this room, utilize this room, but really came in and so like clean and pure in the, in the whole like sense of clean and pure, the devotees had, already done almost like Gundi Chamajanam, the place spotless. But it's Gurudev's room, Guru Mahat. Here is Gurudev and wherever is Gurudev must be, must be Guru Maharaj. And so this room clean. Actually the devotees do a very good job to, to clean a good savor to keep the whole temple actually very clean. And one thing that came in my mind just now when Paramananda was saying, and it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, how when cleansing the Gundicha temple, the devotees used the Lord's name for anything, to indicate anything, you know, to bring water, throw water here, room here, and op you know, open the, the exit part so the water can flood out. Anything that they wanted done, they did with the holy name. It reminded me how really it is reasonable that this takes place. Because, for instance, there's the, a refugee dog here, <laughs> the dog which has come with the devotees, the refugee devotees coming from Ukraine. And this dog, maybe it speaks Ukrainian, who knows, but all he can say is woof, 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 and gesture. And he's, you know, how dogs' ears go in their different ways. And you can see what the, that the dog is communicating something. And so, but his only sound is woof, woof, woof. So in, 
as devotees, our only sound should only be Krishna, Krishna, Gopala, Govinda. They should be like this. This is the sound of the devotees. And with that sound, that sound that Mahaprabhu and the devotees, what kind of caliber of sound was that, by the way? Then that is the sound. With that sound, and they're communicating. So we can't think that, oh, how can you communicate just by saying Govinda, Govinda for this and Govinda, Govinda for that? There's maybe a little, remnant, a little remnant of that is left in Hawaii, right? Where they say aloha for greetings and aloha for goodbye. So <laughs> anyhow, depending on how the sound is used. So the devotees, they're not barking. They're not barking, but they are chanting, chanting the Lord's name. But if an animal can communicate with one woof, 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 we can communicate for sure with the heart and with the holy name. So let us do so. And various devotees also joined us on, that I can see, and I know there are always more on Facebook. And so we appreciate your presence on Facebook too. And Gorangi Devi is there. And Raghavan Yadav, who joins us quite regularly, is there and various devotees, and uh, yes, all the various messages, various Hare Krishnas, um, obeisances, so as we do when we join together, then the devotees and friends are coming, giving their respects to everybody, so please for that. And Amiya Sindhu Prabhu, who maybe his clock is an hour different from our clock, but he just arrived, maybe uh, summertime <laughs> time change oh he's gone to calcutta our oh, calcutta is uh, a timeless place they call rome the eternal city i wonder what they call cat oh i know what they call calcutta but it's ridiculous they call it the city of joy after some movie or some book or something and it has this big signboard oh, i had it one time when you come out from calcutta airport and you're in a taxi, a rattly old taxi, going then, you come to the first T-junction you come to, to the circular road that goes around Calcutta, the VIP road. And then there's a giant sign that says, welcome to the city of joy. You have to kind of give a little question mark about that. <laughs> so anyway, but I was going to say something else about Calcutta. Not the city of joy, because we're not going to mix joy with our inviting the Lord into our heart. Um, but Calcutta, it does seem to have a different uh, whole measuring yardstick, and one of them is time. Calcutta, time is also so very, very strange, and you notice time. 4 a.m. in Calcutta, Calcutta is remarkably a uh, sweet place and the air from the Ganges is coming up and the old uh, columns and things you just don't notice in the daytime because it's so you know crazy are we allowed to say crazy but I mean it's energetic it's a very energetic place with horns people cars everything going rickshaws all competing for whatever space there may be that space must be taken up and so it's all kind of going on in a whole living competition. But Calcutta has its nature and life. And personally, I find it a very sweet city. But uh, Amir Sindhubu has gone to Calcutta today. So his devotional experience, maybe we can hear next time, because today our time is up. And Chipad Dandi Maharaj joined us along the way. I did, Maharaj, give my obeisances as I saw you, because first we must give respect to the Vaish to the sannyasis in particular, but to all the Vaishnavas by Gurudev's affectionate guidance as we've been hearing today. Anyway, dear devotees, cleansing the temple, cleansing the heart, let, let us always try to invite the Lord into the clean heart. It's our lifetime's practice again, everything is our lifetime's practice. It's not just for one day in the year or for Know, one hour a week or one day a week or at special times. We try to make these practices our, our daily life. Continuous life. Timeless life. 
Hare Krishna, dear devotees, have a wonderful day today, a wonderful day tomorrow, tomorrow Jagannath. I mean, for most of us, tomorrow is a Jagannath Rathiyatra day. And please do, just do a Google search or a, a what, what, whatever search you search. And you will find where the live broadcast is broadcast on the internet. And we have watched year by year and really usually quite a good coverage. So let us join. And I don't know what, the, what restrictions are in Puri this year. I have no idea. Let us see whether there are a million people as pre-COVID time or whether there's any restriction or what is happening. But the quality, let us see through the eye of Guru, the eye of Gauranga, what is Rathayatra, participate there. And part of the participation is cleansing of his temple, Kundicha Marjana. Mm -hmm. Jai Shila Gurudev, Om Vishnupad, Shila Bhakti, Sunda Govinda, Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki, Jai. And Jai Shila Guru Maharaj, Om Vishnupad, Shila Bhakti, Rokho, Kridha, Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki, Jai. Bhagavan Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Bhanga Ki Jai. Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Vishwarin Shila A.C. Bhakti Varanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. All the present day Shri Chaitanya Sarasat Acharya Vrinda Ki Jai. All the assembled devotees Ki Jai. Jai Shiva Dandi Maharaj Ki Jai. Shiva Karmananda Prabhu Ki Jai. Praneshwari Devi Dasi Ki Jai. Bhagavan Prabhu Ki Jai all of our senior section and on the Facebook all of our Jagamohini Didi Ki Jai Maladhari Devi Rasi Ki Jai Rupa Vilas Prabhu Ki Jai Sevu Didi Ki Jai all of our um, Vaishnava Vrinda um, present with us Ki Jai Banchakalpaturu Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyascha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Wishing you wonderful days and let us meet again soon, let our cleaned, as best we can, hearts come again with each other very soon. Jai Shila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. See you soon.